Hello everyone and welcome to Thursday Morning's Assembly. As always, it's absolutely lovely to be with you uh, this morning. We've got a lovely story. As always, this morning's story is the story of the Good Samaritan, which I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with. A uh, very important tale, a parable, which is essentially um, an easy way of understanding a story. Um, and there's a moral at the end of it. And you know when we do our assemblies, we always ask you to think about what the message is or what the moral is in that story. And of course, as always, being Thursday, uh, when we've had our story, we'll be going over to the Golden Achievement uh, section of our school website and having a look at some of the wonderful work you've been doing. I have got one special announcement uh, to make today as well. So I've had one email from a teacher uh, who is particularly keen, uh, rightly so, uh, for me to share with you some of the work that one of her children has been doing. So it's a particularly special mention of that today. So this is a parable, it's a parable of the Good Samaritan, and it actually starts with a question. And the question was a man who was asking Jesus. It was someone who was trying to maybe a little bit smart and maybe trick Jesus to see if Jesus was actually a good teacher or not. And this is the question that he asked. And he said, what should I do so that I can go to heaven and live forever? Now remember, Christians believe that uh, when they die, their souls will go to heaven uh, and they will live uh, to, you know, forever in heaven. And this one particular Christian wanted to find out from Jesus what should they should do um, to go to heaven and live forever. And Jesus replied, what is written in the Bible? What do you think? And the man answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength, and love your neighbour as yourself. Well, that's right, said Jesus. Do this and you will live forever in heaven. But the man wanted to know more. So asked Jesus, OK, but who is my neighbour? Now, Jesus decided to answer this question with a story. And that way he could help everyone understand what our neighbours or who our neighbours are. And this is what Jesus said. There was once a Jewish man walking along a road. He was coming from Jerusalem and was heading for Jericho which was a full day or two of walking. The road was rocky and there were small hills all around. The man was walking along just humming to himself and enjoying the nice day when suddenly a group of other men jumped out from behind a hill. They took all his belongings and tore off most of his clothes. They didn't want him to follow them so they beat him very badly and left him lying and bleeding on the side of the road. So basically, children, he'd been attacked by a group and they'd taken everything from him, including most of his clothes, and left him in a very bad way at the side of the road. Fortunately, a few minutes later, a priest was walking down the same path and noticed the man lying by the side of the road. Do you know what he said? Or what he did. You would think he would run over to help the man, but instead he crossed the road and walked on the other side and acted like he didn't see the man. Well, that's odd, isn't it? You'd have thought he would have gone and helped him. So the man's still lying on the road in a pretty bad way, but fortunately an hour later another man came by. This time it was a Levite. Now Levites are people who help priests with their work. Now, you'd thought he would probably help the man as well, but do you know what he did? He slowed down, walked a little closer to the man, but then kept on walking without helping him at all. Now, you might be thinking that maybe the man lying by the side of the road looked like he was resting. It could be. And that maybe is why the priest and the priest helper didn't stop to help the man. However, you remember, children, that we found out at the start of the story that the man had had most of his possessions, his belongings, his clothes taken from him, and was in a bad way. He'd been hurt by the group of people who had, who'd, who'd gone to him. So it was pretty obvious that he was hurt. He was bleeding, he, most of his clothes were taken from him, and he was bruised, and he was finding it hard to breathe. 
A few minutes later, another man came walking, and he was a Samaritan, and Samaritans are people who lived a long time ago. And he saw the man who was sitting by the side of the road. And do you know what the Samaritan did? As soon as he saw the man, he went over and he felt compassion for him. He understood the man was hurt. He had, fortunately, some bandages with him, which he put on his sores, and he poured oil and wine, which is very expensive, on the sores to stop them from getting worse. Your mums and dads, whoever looks after you, may sometimes put some TCP uh, if you cut yourself, and, and uh, basically it's doing the same thing. Then he lifted the man onto his own donkey and took him to a hotel to take care of him. The next day, the Samaritan took out enough money so the man could stay at the hotel until he was well enough to leave. He paid the person who ran the hotel and asked him to take care of the poor man. If he wasn't better after about two months, said the Samaritan, I will come back and pay any extra cost. And that was the story that Jesus told. And at the end of the story, Jesus asked, which of these three people, remember there was the priest, the Levite and the Samaritan, which of these three people do you think was a neighbour to the man who was left beaten on the side of the road? Now remember, children, at the start of the story, we started off with a man who we think was maybe trying to trick Jesus and asked him this tricky question about how he could go to heaven and live there forever. And the man who asked that question at the start, through the story, understood that your neighbour was the person who had compassion and who had helped. And Jesus said, go and do the same. And children, we often talk about being good neighbours and looking after people, and looking after people particularly who are less fortunate than ourselves. But not only that, we always talk about helping each other in school. And children, I think there's nothing better we can do um, in, our, in our life and in our world to help someone else, to help someone out, to make their life a bit better, to, to give something um, to someone else. And it doesn't have to be uh, money, it doesn't have to be a present, it can be giving them a smile or a kind word, saying well done to someone is just as important. Making someone feel good, making someone feel happy, making someone happy. Um, and this are the ways we can help each other out. And I think, children, if we do that, then our school and our world and our country will be a much better place. So today, tomorrow, um, at the weekend, Think how you can be a good neighbour. And that doesn't just mean people you live next to, it's people you live with. Um, make sure you socially distance, of course, and stay safe. But what can you do to be um, a good neighbour um, now and in the future? So that's our story. As I said at the start, being uh, Thursday, it's an opportunity to look at some of the good work. And um, I think over this shoulder here, um, I'm pointing, uh, there's space there at the moment, there's just the map of the world, but I'm pretty sure that George, um, with his um, computer wizardry, will be putting some pictures on just here to help the story, and also some work that the children, that you have all done in, in class over the course of this week. So, uh, we did talk about the special mention, and I think I'd be in hot water uh, with Jennifer Buckley if I didn't mention Malik, um, Malik has done some, I've seen the pictures, it's an it's a absolutely cracking piece of work on, on Nelson Mandela. And as Jennifer says, Malik is only five, so you do need to, I'm sure George has put it up there, I've emailed to it to him, but also go to graftonschool.co.uk and go and have a look at that wonderful work that, that Malik has done. It really is um, quite a, an incredible piece of work and remember Malik is only five so a wonderful piece of work on Nelson Mandela some great writing uh, wonderful drawing and, and great colouring as well so very well done to Malik okay so on to the rest of the uh, the golden achievement mentions for this week and uh, we're going to start at uh, the end of last week I don't think I'm duplicating but if I am well you get two mentions and, and that can't be a bad thing so in sapphire class 
Um, well done to Alexander for a wonderful message about school. I think I'm duplicating myself there, but I'm repeating myself, but I know that Alexander's message was a very important message about um, Black Lives Matter, about All Lives Matter, about being anti-racist, about living together as a really supportive and wonderful family that we are at Grafton and how important that is to him uh, and to everyone, of course. And moving on, um, uh, Netta, very well done to Netta in Scarlet class, has written some, uh, some wonderful instructions. Uh, parody of getting fit whilst making tea. Uh, so well done. A parody, of course, is a humorous uh, um, uh, adaptation of something. So have a look at that. And Cavell, uh, I enjoyed watching this as well, Cavell. Uh, you did a recording of yourself doing a marketing presentation. And it made me think of Dragon's Den. I don't know if any of you watched that or your parents watched that, but it certainly made me think of Dragon's Den. And maybe Cavell, if you're, if you're watching this video, maybe in the future, you'll be on Dragon's Den um, presenting one of your ideas, so very well done. Uh, Kalia, also in Scarlet class, very well done. Some careful work interpreting Shakespeare's language in Macbeth, so well done to Kalia. And Maisie, also in Scarlet class, always does well with Friday's math challenges. Great work, Maisie, from your Scarlet class teacher. Uh, Orange class, very well done to Chen, for your work on the 1969 moon landing. And Adam um, has written some a, a persuasive brochure. Yes, I'm, I'm knowing you, Adam, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you would know how to persuade someone uh, to do something. I'm sure that's, a, that's something you've, I'm sure you've done very well on that. Oh yeah, big news everyone. Eva won the ChildNet film competition. Um, I think we hopefully we've celebrated that already. And, you know, that's really up there with some of the great achievements that you've all done. So very well done, Eva. And Eva's film is on, on, the, uh, on the website, so do have a look. Also in Orange Class, Alicia's Snakes Fact File. Ooh, not sure how I feel about snakes. Um, if you like them, go along and have a look. If you're not sure, like me, about snakes, and maybe it's one to avoid, um, you, you decide. Um, in Sapphire Class, Tasneen has made a wonderful video showing us how to make uh, shiro wat, a traditional Ethiopian dish. Um, she spoke with knowledge about the ingredients and the method, and it looks delicious. Um, it's making me feel hungry. It's, it's getting on for lunchtime um, here, so uh, I think I'll be looking, seeing what we can have for, to eat in a minute. So also in Sapphire class, Sabrine read the whole class, a wonderful story, Monkey Mischief by Stephanie Moss. She read with beautiful expression throughout. Wow, that's lovely. And that's it. There are golden achievements. Very well done, um, children. Uh, I know you're all working incredibly hard um, with your learning on Seesaw uh, and those children who, of course, are in school as well, working on their learning on Seesaw. Um, keep safe. Um, stay well. Um, weekly weather update. The weather's not been so great recently. Uh, hopefully better at the weekend. But, you know, don't forget sun safety. When the sun comes out, sun, sun, suntan lotion, hats, water, and do protect um, shoulders and heads. That's really important as well. So as I said, stay safe, stay well, and uh, we'll see you again very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.